Mobile One. Hey guys, this is going to be a Wild Card Wednesday video on an air conditioning system that I'm working on in a 2014 GMC Sierra. And this one kicked my butt at first, but I did come around to figure out what it was. So I was going to pass this on to you guys because, as I've said before, on the GMs, their manufacturing is incredibly consistent. So a lot of other people are going to have the same problem. This was kind of a factory defect in materials in that we had a leak that started here. You can see there's some wetness around that area. If I get the light off, you can see the wetness there. So that's between the condenser and the receiver dryer. So given that we had a leak right there in the front going through the winter, we got a lot of moisture. And by moisture, I mean salt water from the roads being salted. When we pulled this valve core out, instead of looking fresh and shiny like this one here, it looked like this. You look at this bottom end of it, you can see there's a bunch of rust. But then you also see some aluminum shrapnel. That shrapnel comes from the compressor. So backing up, looking at the system, knowing that it's got rust and shrapnel and crap in it, that means that you have a saturation of moisture that's in this receiver dryer. They call it a dryer because it's full of silica gel. That desk ink little packets that say do not eat that you find in all the little products that you buy. That's what that's full of and it's got a saturation point just like a magnet can only pick up so many paper clips that can only hold so much water. Once you're past that and then you recharge it without evacuating it out, that leaves you vulnerable because then you've got a bunch of moisture in the system and then that moisture can cause the compressor to fail and chew itself up. Once that happens, you've got a little valve back here, the expansion valve, and if you've got aluminum and particles that are in it, then it can't open and close just like this one. See that tiny little movement? It opens just a teeny tiny bit. When I put this one in, it held at first, but as soon as I did a little test leak off by pushing on it like that, aluminum got stuck in there and then just jammed it up to where it wouldn't close anymore. And that's why we had the slow leak that we had here. If you've got bad readings, if something doesn't seem quite right, and it seems like this wasn't closing because I wasn't getting the pressure difference that you're supposed to get here. On your low side, it should be at 35. At your high side, it should be up around 200. And I couldn't get it to go above about 160, 165. And that's because I can bet you anything there's aluminum that's stuck in that expansion valve. It's not able to close off to make it a fine enough difference to create the pressure difference and give you good AC. If you get into that situation and it seems like something's kind of hokey or funky, it, one of the first things I would check is I would check the joint uh, between the receiver dryer and the condenser. If you've got a break or a leak there, and especially if it hasn't been evacuated and it's just been topped off with refrigerant, there's a good chance that you're going to have the same problems.